the positive attitude I think makes things happen. It draws things back yeah. in. It just I I'm, I'm getting I'm receiving what I'm giving up. Yeah, of course, of course. And you know so, and that's what happens with carers. You know, like with my family. Like I'm. Okay, sometimes I'm grouchy because I haven't slept or... Because I can... Before, in the, in the early days, I'd go days without sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine when somebody hasn't slept, they're going to be moody, right? Mm. So they've had to be tough because not to take offence by what I say. Mm. I could be get away or get or go away or, you know... See, like if you haven't slept for three days and you finally gone off to sleep and accidentally they open the door and say, Mom! <laughs> Do I know what you mean. <laughs> it's, it's like, ah, but then so they got to like, close the door quick and run away, you know, because she's coming, she's a dragon. But they don't take things personally. Mm -hmm. Don't take things personally. And that's not just with anybody from a brain injury element, it's from any condition. Mm. Any, and I keep using the word chronic illnesses because um, that's my sort of experience with my condition is chronic. So it's like mm. a, a kind of all hands on deck, all around you sort of condition. Mm. and. You're trying to be yourself within that. That that in itself was the biggest part is who am I, who am I then, who am I now? Mm -hmm. And that's what's helped me move forward. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm... I'm here on uh, inspire i hope you are all keeping well so um i have a very special special person here with me today and uh, yeah i think i should ask her to introduce herself mm -hmm. so uh keep tuned on inspire this is really very very inspiration so i have donna for you donna please for the first viewers obviously they want to know who donna is and what she does you know a little bit yeah, of, yeah. okay um uh, well my name is donna um i met emmy a few months ago yeah and we decided that we're gonna kind of work together do videos and it's taken a while for me to get here and now we're finally finally here on the sofa and i'm glad you're here and i'm really excited <laughs> to be here um i talk forever guys i talk on and on and on so you're gonna have to like say don Wait a minute. <laughs> what what are you on about? If I'm just rambling on, okay. Um, so about myself, yeah, I'm Donna from Cardiff. Um, sort of, uh, I meet a lot of people from working and meeting out in the community. Mm -hmm. So I find a lot of like like-minded people who like to work within the community, and and do projects and to kind of create social groups and meetings up and that's how I think I'll, we all got together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's having like an inspirational women's group, which is amazing. So. Before meeting you guys, uh, my life has just been a heck of a roller coaster, mm -hmm. ups and downs and changes. So, depending on who's watching this to who's met me before, you'll think, okay, what phase, what phase is she in now? Because mm. there's been a lot of changes. Um, yeah. A lot of people might know me from within the community. That's before I become unwell. Mm -hmm. So flim things have flipped. I'm now working. Um, not working for myself but also helping out in a funeral home mm -hmm. so that's another big change but um mm -hmm. the reason why we clicked because um i told you that i was recovering from a brain injury yeah and um and that was really very interesting mm -hmm. because i uh, hadn't met someone who was uh, uh, like in the same state where you are you are you are the time we met and you told me you are recovering and you are open up actually you're very open to talk about mm -hmm. it because sometimes it, this it tends to be some kind of a stigma where people don't want to talk about it where people want to hide what they went through but uh, I was uh, so amazed and surprised at the same time how you opened up to tell mm -hmm. me what you've been mm -hmm. going through so why did you get the courage really to speak out and uh, yeah. Well, when I got told I was unwell, mm -hmm. um, obviously things were like, it was like having a rug flipped and what sort of drives me and it's something that I can't, no matter what's happened, it doesn't change, it doesn't damper, is my positive mental attitude. Mm -hmm. um, another reason why we become friends is because of that positivity and yeah. we sort of, like a magnet to each other, to yeah. each other, wasn't it? It's like, mm -hmm. wow, that person is positive. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, I find what what's helped me since becoming unwell or recovering is talking about it. Yeah. Talking and writing and recording. So I started uh, doing videos mm -hmm. about the condition, which the condition is, I don't think we've mentioned it, the condition. What was the condition? The condition um, I got diagnosed with uh, is called autoimmune limbic encephalitis. Mm -hmm. So autoimmune, meaning obviously my body um, is having like an autoimmune response to something. Mm -hmm. um, it was going to war basically on itself mm -hmm. and 
the part that was making the problem was there was a protein that was started attacking my brain. Um, only mine, and not, nothing too big, thankfully, because if it, if it went full on, and then I'd be really unwell, I wouldn't be, I probably wouldn't be here with you on the sofa today, mm -hmm. especially not talking, mm -hmm. and, you know, and those who are, who have had experienced family members or, you know, themselves who've been careful like this, you know yourself that it's a long journey. Mm -hmm. So I found, yeah, talking about it, recording, sharing details, because in encephalitis is very, they'll say rare, but mm -hmm. to be honest, I think it's just misdiagnosed and undiagnosed. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people will have symptoms um, of memory problems or mm -hmm. depression, things that you can have linked to all other conditions. And so before I was put into probably the mental health scope, mm -hmm. I was lucky to have a doctor that went, I recognised those symptoms. And mm -hmm. I was just blessed. Every step of the way, blessed. Like, it easily could have gone left or right. And I just, from the, the medical team I've had, mm -hmm. from the access to services, and I think, all this comes back to my mental attitude. I've opened myself up to receiving as much help as I can. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing is mm -hmm. in recovery is acceptance. Acceptance. Receiving help mm -hmm. and support. And so I just wanted to share that message of, look, okay, I have got a chronic condition, but it shouldn't be a negative thing. It should be another thing to use to fight. So like you never had that moment of, um, of maybe feeling afraid to share about your condition or feeling lonely like tell me about the first days of your you know okay um well the first days of becoming unwell it mm -hmm. was scary because i didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. and um again a lot of people i spoke to was putting things down to don you're doing too much you know because i was doing my job mm -hmm. i was volunteering in the community i had mm -hmm. a radio show mm -hmm. Um, which is another thing we're going to be talking about hopefully on different shows as well mm -hmm. at the radio show so I was doing so many different things I thought at the same time. maybe I'm doing too much so I wasn't too worried about things I thought okay maybe I'm doing too much I was more worried about what is it that I've got to stop doing because I don't know what I'm doing too mm -hmm. much of mm -hmm. um, so it was scary knowing that that to be honest I've done more than this I'm, I can handle more than this mm -hmm. this is not it so there's scary for me to realize that something's wrong Right. Um, something's going on and I'm and I can't control it mm -hmm. you know so as much as I was making adaptions if I was forgetting my way to somewhere um, because that's what it causes cause a lot of memory mm -hmm. problems um, I was putting my sat nav on mm -hmm. so I, I, I wasn't coming home and saying to my husband oh I've had a really bad day I forgot where I was going mm -hmm. I forget that I forgot where I was going because I you know didn't make a big deal out of it put a sat nav on that got me to where I was going end of issue so you forgot that you forgot yes basically and that's where things were kind of snowballing to where mm. my husband and children were realizing okay so i'm calling like a chair a dog you know i'm saying oh can you pick up my coat from the dog mm -hmm. and uh, i was you know saying things like put the pizza in the post box and all these things were building up to a bigger picture where if you think about what they told me about thing called semantics so mm. A chair has four legs, a dog has four legs. Yeah. So my brain was just seeing, not even seeing a dog. I knew it was a chair and it was called chair, but the word would come out dog. Oh. Um, so again, with whatever else. Like, so with um, with the oven and the post box, mm. you put things in the oven, you put things in the post box, mm -hmm. there was a link there, mm. all semantics. Mm. So that's this is when I got scared, is when the doctor said the words semantic dementia. Mm. And we all know dementia has been a, a kind of... A, a condition or a disease that kind of changes your brain and you people you know you don't have a normal idea of it until you're faced with it you're scared mm. and that on paper you know is enough to drive anybody a little bit like sort of like really really back into bed and under the duvets and, and worrying but I, I didn't have that I I thought let me just look into this let me mm -hmm. see what what can help let me see what I can do mm -hmm. um, Again, another thing that was scary was when um, I was looking at my son, and at those in those days, my son was always with me down the radio. He was helping out down there. He was most places I was going, he was there with me helping. So I couldn't understand why I'm looking at him, and I couldn't think of his name, you know. And boy, would come out. It'd be like, oh, and I say to my daughter, I'll pass that to boy. Like it, it'd be rather than pass that to Savannah, he'd be pass that to boy, mm. without even having time to think. It'd be just boy, and. So that was kind of hurtful in a way that thinking for him thinking that you know, ignoring him yeah the name why, why how, how is his name going out did she forget my name is luckily my children didn't find anything you know obviously they didn't i don't know whether they went to their own rooms and got upset when i was doing mm. things but to me they didn't they didn't seem to fi find it 
they didn't seem to make out, they didn't get upset in front of me or offended if I called them the wrong name, if mm. I called, or if I, because I did, in my head I'm saying something like, again, what I'm saying dog instead of chair, in my head is coming out as chair. Mm. So when they're looking at me confused, like, what do you mean, ma'am? I'm thinking, what do, you, what do you mean? I've just told you what I want. And, and, and so my, my frustration would go crazy through the roof and they've had to handle all of those things. Mm. So these are the things behind the scene is mainly frustrated, fear of basically not knowing like, okay, how bad is this? What's going to happen? And with me, I'm not a control freak, but I like being in control, <laughs> if does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when, like I said, when I was able to control things with the sat nav, it got to a stage where I wasn't even to be able to think about putting a sat nav on. Mm -hmm. Then things were getting scary. So luckily, like I said, with the medical team, we found what was wrong. We then started medication. Mm. So where encephalitis is brain inflammation, um, we had to have, um, see we, I see, <laughs> I had to take um, immunosuppressant medication to suppress the immune system, but then to bring down inflammation. Mm -hmm. So I had steroids. So it must have been, it must have taken about two weeks for me to go, to take, to put on two stone in weight. So I'm not sure um, how to, how, how to kind of, two stone would be, you know, 28 pounds, yeah? Mm -hmm. Two weeks, mm -hmm. boom. Weight has always been a, a, a thing of mine, you know, I've always kind of been involved with like weight training or, or trying to keep fit. So mm -hmm. when I put on all that weight, my face changed. My, I had a thing called moon face. My mm -hmm. face was out here. Well, that um, because of the steroids, mm -hmm. uh, all the medication. So, but I didn't think that it was going to happen, like things changing so fast. Mm -hmm. So where you start, you know, you get told you got this, you get told to take this. And then two weeks later, you look in the mirror and you look nothing like yourself. And you're mm -hmm. like, wow. But then I'm thinking... But so, did you recognize that, that change and how did it make you feel? Oh my god, yeah. Um, I was devastated because mm. I didn't like how I looked. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't accept, even I accepted I got a brain condition, but I couldn't accept the weight gain. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't accept those things, you know, and it, it sounds very superficial mm. because underneath it all, I'm alive. Yeah, medication's working, I'm, I'm not, you know, things aren't getting worse because they caught it at the stage where, you know, I'm able to, you know, build on and continue my life. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to deal with all the kind of, because um, when the medication started working, the inflammation came down, but then it's like a balloon that when you blow a balloon up, it doesn't never go back to the same shape. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of damaged, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where the brain, brain damage comes into it. So I found mm -hmm. that my uh, communication, and I, like I said, I can talk for whales, I can talk for the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was finding problems talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll sometimes slur, people will accuse me of being drunk, um, mm. so you get people not picking on you, but people like assuming judging. things, judging, mm. yeah, um, so I'll be slurring, repeating myself, which is probably what I've done loads of year, because um, it's not like I'll forget what I've said, I, I'll say the same thing with the same passion, it's like it's just, I, it probably is I forgot what I said, but it's, it's different to that, it's, it doesn't feel like I've just forgot what I said, so I'm repeating, it's like I wouldn't have remembered that I've said it, mm. or forgot I've said it, it's, it's a weird, weird thing, mm. um, so for that reason then a lot of people would take themselves out of the community and be scared not me i i thought my friends my my family my you know the, the way i am in, in my neighborhood and my community if they don't understand if they don't if they okay if they don't understand it that's uh, that's understandable but if they don't get it and don't like it the fact that you know i might ask them the same question twice mm -hmm. if, if they if they think oh god you know donnie do my head in you know i can't be bothered but i'll just say it honestly and just don't be around me it's fine, you know, I haven't come across anybody who had a problem because because I'm open and honest. I'll say, look, I might swear, I might repeat myself, I mm. might even, even um, just, yeah, it, it is again, is the forgetting, you know, what I've asked, what I'm saying, and it'll go on. So talking, it was hard. I still find it difficult, but I find it, because um, it's challenging, mm -hmm. but I enjoy challenges. So I, the only way to get my communication back is talking. You know, that's mm -hmm. the rehabilitation, you know. Um, so memory uh, stuff, I've been, I mean, I'm, I'm addicted to buying books. I buy books, I buy journals, I write things down. I record myself a lot mm -hmm. to remember stuff. So again, it's making adaptions, but positive ones, you know, you, you've got some smart things in the house and you mm -hmm. can make use for them. Mm -hmm. Technically, I, I stopped being able to use phones and things pr properly. I forget, like, you know, I just, you know, you pick up the phone, you, you text, you do certain things, but other stuff, what, it's like use it or lose it. I was losing information. I was losing the ability to do things that I mm. wasn't doing. Um, so for me, things I found out that I, I, that I had a limitation on, I worked through it. Rather than ignoring it, mm. I worked through it. So did you have like a moment of uh, 
being angry at yourself, not liking the condition you're in and uh, wanting a quicker change. Did you have that situation and how did you manage yeah. it? The biggest thing that happened was work. I had to stop working in the capacity. So I was working as a youth worker, I was enjoying it and I was doing educational services. So mm -hmm. giving information on sexual health and drugs. Mm -hmm. I started getting frustrated with myself when I wasn't able to do 100% of the job anymore. Mm. Even spelling, spelling was going. Mm. So, but again, I was asking a young person, instead of me being embarrassed that I couldn't spell something, mm. I'd call somebody up and say, okay, do me a favor, will you write on the board for me? You know, so I wasn't embarrassing myself, mm. but I was getting frustrated and angry that the day when they said to me, Donna, you, you can't work in this, you can't do this. Um, and even, even so, you can't work at all for the foreseeable because you have to, recover okay. and in fact we have to stop what was happening mm. those are the times i got frustrated and angry at myself mm. um because it i'm not a spoiled child mm. i like the things to go my way mm. and like i said about the control it was when things started going out of my control those are the parts i got mm. i mean i didn't mind the medication i went mad about the weight gain obviously mm. Mm. i didn't mind staying 10 days in hospital missing the kids going back to school in the uniform i didn't mind all those things because mm. i knew this is for the better cause i'm recovering and i'm getting the treatment mm. But it's it's the things that um, I couldn't do, like the work and stuff. Mm. I've had to start again in every capacity. Yeah, but again, this um, brings uh, um, a question of how, how, like, your relationship maybe with your family members, your close family members, your friends. How was it like? I understand you are very honest and spoke out what you're going through. Mm. But how did they perceive you? Was it nice? How about it? what if it wasn't nice? How did it be, for example? Um, what would happen would be um, my family would be a little bit worried about. Say that if they knew that I'd forgotten something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or a word. They, it got to the stage that they didn't know whether they should correct me mm -hmm. and tell me what I'd forgotten. Because I wouldn't be angry. So if I said um, if I said dog instead of chair, they wouldn't be like, oh, you mean chair? I wouldn't be like, oh, bloody hell, or, or I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't have a problem with them correcting me. Mm. But I know on their side, they wouldn't know, oh, should we tell her that she just said this four times already? Mm. Should we tell her that, you know, or like, should we tell her that we found uh, the TV remote control in the fridge, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, should we tell her that, should we, you know, this, <laughs> see, this is the thing, we've learned to, yeah, that's one thing, the children used to do a thing called the Donna Dictionary, so the words I was saying instead of, or the words I was forgetting, they kind of put in things, you know, like, we're making, we're making, we're making jokes over there, mm -hmm. I put together words, it's, it's funny that it becomes a whole new word, and I'm calling it like as if it's a normal thing, and they, they've had to learn <laughs> these things, so mm -hmm. we laugh and we smile, and I'm unfiltered. So some of my, my, my best friend to me, and she loves that because she, she laughs at the things I'm saying because I, I say things straight as it is. So mm -hmm. a lot of people probably don't like that. Um, I'm not nothing negative, but I'm, I'm, I'm straight, I'm unfiltered. I, I'll say to somebody, oh, I like that dress. And well, I like, you know, and some people might think, oh, I'm a bit too forward or whatever, mm -hmm. but I just, I can't. Mm -hmm. um, which people love the fact that I'm open, honest and yeah. direct. You know, at least you know where you stand with me. But, um, Relationship wise, would it be you know, with the children, me having a trust thing like me thinking, I'm glad I can trust these children because mm. when my set my son would be like, Mum, you said I could do that, and, I'm, and I'd have no recollection of any conversation at all. Mm. And they're trying to tell me, No, you said yes, that you said I could have that, you know, so you said I can have this 10 pound or whatever, mm. and I'm looking for the money and it's not there, and I'm like. Who stole my money? And mm. they were like, you "No one stole your money, mum. You, you said I can have this." And I'm mm. thinking, I really can't. There's, there's no, I, I, there's no memory of it whatsoever. That whole conversation, that whole situation. Mm. So I trust them. Then, like, okay, yeah, okay, I gotta, I gotta put it, my trust, my heart, everything, my mind in their hands because at those stages, I'd have to take their word for it. Yeah. And that's where you become vulnerable. That's the scary part. Yeah. And. Luckily for me, because of being positive all the time, I didn't feel weak. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of people might already now have the depression coming in and the, mm. you know, with it, the self-hate coming in. I was lucky because I, I, I was seeing these things as challenges and in, not, I can't say my, like, you know, like enjoying them. I was, I was enjoying the fact that I was able to recognize, accept, I was, I, I was accept, so I was enjoying learning my new brain, <laughs> if that makes sense, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I'm, I was lucky the fact I could trust my family and friends. Mm. I was lucky that my friends were able to trust that what I'm saying is not 
I don't mean to be mean, mm -hmm. I don't mean to be nasty, I'm just, you know, I can't help it. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, I mean, I, I had to stop doing the radio, that got me mad, uh, because I wasn't able to listen to music and think at the same time. I know that sounds mm -hmm. like an obvious thing we all do without mm -hmm. thinking. <laughs> My brain was process. It was like a process and speed thing. Mm -hmm. And when I was listening back to some of my radio shows, I'm thinking, "Wow, like that was so." When I say so rubbish, pe people listening wouldn't have realised. Wouldn't have. But I could hear the mistakes. I could hear the the ums and the ahs and the stutterings and the the, the, the delays in what I'm even. Nothing was making sense. Put it mm -hmm. that way. But I, you know, to the outside world, it's just a radio show on a community radio mm -hmm. station. To me, is it, my passion. Mm -hmm. And yourself, you said you've done a radio background, and mm -hmm. you know, you want it to be, you know, not perfect, but as as best it can be. As best it can be. And it wasn't so, and I just knew, and I was struggling, and even putting, putting the show together was a hard producing mm -hmm. the show. I don't know, it was a show was an hour, so you got to select songs, you got a million songs you want to choose from, and then because it was a love hour, I had mm -hmm. people giving dedications or requests, you got to try and fit that in, and those things which I used to enjoy before. I was finding it very hard. Very hard. So again, um, you talked about being positive, so um, you had that positive mind. And I, I love the <laughs> post, your recent post, by the way, of, what do we, What did you say again? I put, I put it up so I can make sure we say it. Yeah, um, I really loved it. Yeah, because yeah, that's that's exactly how, what, what, what got me here, isn't yeah. it? So I put a post on Facebook, mm. uh, which said, be careful how you're talking to yourself mm. because you are listening. Because you're listening. So uh, try to, to, to elaborate a little bit on that because I think, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We listen to ourselves, but how are we, what are we talking to ourselves? What message are yeah. we sending to ourselves? Why I liked it was because it's a reminder to be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's how you should be careful how you listen, how you're talking to yourself or mm -hmm. even what you're saying out loud or you treat other people because you are receiving that stuff yourself, that energy. Mm. So I find the more positive vibes and the more positive things I bring up, mm. I, it brings it comes back to me. So that's why it hit me. Mm. Um, so you see, mm. be careful how you are how you're talking to yourself because you are listening. Mm. Makes sense. It makes so much sense. And uh, so again, your your viewers, the biggest thing after that is to mm. be kind. To be kind to that's ourselves. The, that's what I've done this whole time with my condition and my recovery. Mm. I've been really kind to myself. I mm. haven't. The days I've got frustrated, I haven't really beat myself up. I haven't, um, I haven't, uh, see, I must really annoy people uh, because I just can't, I can't be no other way. Mm. When I was in the hospital for those, so, so one, I was a 10 day stretch one time and on day three, mm. I, I'm, I'm realizing that, look, there's things I can do here. So I'm trying to like help the nurses clean. They're like, mm -hmm. no, Don, you, you, you get back in that bed. I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't feel like I should be in bed. I feel like I should be doing something. and. Mm. Then, do you know what? I managed myself in the hospital, fine mentally, mm. I always fine mentally, but until say day seven of day 10, a lady came in mm. and, because I'm on, a, I'm on a, um, it was a brain ward, so the people there are people with um, say brain tumors, people who've had, um, what I've had, brain inflammation or any a brain infection, brain, all sorts of brain problems, and a lady come in who had a stroke. Mm. Love. Let me tell you, right, the energy of the whole war just, well, I don't know if anybody else felt it, but for me, mm. oh my God, I just felt so, uh, negative is not the wrong word, it's, and people, like, obviously, the opposite of positive is negative, it didn't feel like negative, it just felt, you felt affected, didn't affected, mm. oh my God, the pressure, the, mm. and I'm looking at this lady, and you know, you're seeing, this, you know, this black lady as well, she must have not been, much older than say 45 young lady and you can see because they have the bed really high because they're doing everything for her they're feeding her they're cleaning her all that and so you realize that you're actually stronger than some people and but also yeah. the sadness i felt for that lady mm. oh my god it was really affected me mm. that well it made my whole body just it just made my whole my i couldn't eat i couldn't oh. and and it is about because why, why am i like i had no choice i just felt i just felt and do you know what? I had to. I had to go and talk to her. And I know it sounds so strange. You know that. You know this is this is all before COVID and stuff. Anyway, so mm -hmm. you're able to like you know walk freely on a on a hospital ward mm -hmm. and them days and things. But I had to go and talk to her. So like, because I noticed that the nurses after they finished feeding and stuff, and they wiped her mouth and they'd gone and they just left her in the bed. And I thought, oh, 
I said, I just got to go and talk to her. Mm. So I went over, and obviously she wasn't able to talk, she wasn't no, able to do she anything, didn't. but I just went up to her, and the only thing I could do was I just held her hand. Mm. And a tear came from her eye, and I just, I thought, I don't want to cry in front of her because I'm, it, it, you've got to be strong for certain people. Mm. I know she mm. doesn't even know a total stranger. Mm. And um, the, day, the second day, she, <laughs> she's smiling and sort of like she's, like again, not talking, but it's you, your eyes. You can just see a bit of life, like because of that kindness. I think she felt from you. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. she mm. maybe run down herself, thinking this mm. is it, but just a touch of positivity. Just yeah. and when I held her hand, all I'm thinking is, love, come on, you can do this. Yeah, it made a difference. Mm. Come on, love, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So for someone maybe going through the same situation that you you went through, and uh, I mean. You think positivity is the only way forward? Uh, see, you got to be careful with it because some people will think, oh, you're in denial of certain things, you're not, you're not accepting things or you're not understanding things. No, mm. I accepted and understood everything. My positive mental attitude, mm. I think it stopped a lot of other issues coming on. Mm. A lot of the mental health problems that could have come on top of it. And then mm. my body is, is not now just dealing with the physical is now dealing with the mental is having to and in mental health people is powerful mental health depression and and, and bipolar is, is people and all the rest anxiety mm. stress to a, to, a, to a sort of clinical level it's mm. it's, it's worse is it's one of the worst conditions mm. uh, mental health is, is a whole awful so mm. I think that's what it did my positive mental attitude was it gave me strength to physically fight mm. and I, so the answer to that is I think it's not the only thing you need, but it's it's one of the biggest things before even medication. You need a positive man because you need to accept, receive, and I can't even get the words what I'm trying to probably say. But with that, what I think has been my strength is mm -hmm. is, and I think if if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be where I am. Like amazing, I, amazing, yeah. amazing. And for someone maybe living with a relative, a family member, going through the mm -hmm. same situation you went through, what do you think uh, could be the best tips maybe to help someone uh, recover quickly? Yeah, anybody with any chronic condition mm -hmm. um, that you're supporting a family member with, I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing is patience. Mm -hmm. Patience um, and understanding, right? And, um, and again, a family member, a carer has to accept as well. My family had to accept that, okay, Donna can't do this no more, or Donna can't do that no more, and mm -hmm. and stop expecting me to be that same person, which again, I've got to learn that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not the same Donna as before I got and well. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I want to be the same Donna, but mm -hmm. the experiences that I've, I've experienced, even, even witnessing that lady with the stroke, I'm not the same Donna anymore. Mm -hmm. Just from being around that sadness and that pain. That trauma. That trauma. Mm -hmm. Because it happens with a lot of people in their jobs, you know, you see things and it just changes you. And so this, this is what as caring for somebody like all my kids are carers. They've been caring for me. I mean, four years ago I was diagnosed with this condition, mm. um, and it's, it's funny how I'm with you today because it's I think it was yesterday or the day before, which would be the twentieth of April. Mm. I got told that I'm actually in remission, <laughs> and this is the first time I've really said it out loud like that, apart from my family. But in remission from. The, the kind of the, the disease part that was causing the condition so oh. I'm no longer under attack okay the protein's gone that was making the problem so well done in the last thank you in the last number of punches show that I'm officially in remission from yeah from the oh, careful like this so good for that. thank you it's just mm. recovering just continuing the recovery mm -hmm. I got a great brain injury team mm. again I'm blessed because you know the access I have people have been on the waiting list for years and mm. I've just been you know, a, a, a slot come up and I just managed to be able to be free, to be able mm. to come in to meet the, the team that day and all of a sudden I'm in. So those things, people might think you're lucky, but I say I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah, and, and that positive attitude I think makes things happen. It draws things back yeah. in. It just, I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm receiving what I'm giving up. Yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, so, and that's what happens with carers, you know, like with my family, like I'm, Okay, sometimes I'm grouchy because I haven't slept or... Because I can, before, in the, in the early days, I'd go days without sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine when somebody hasn't slept, they're going to be moody, right? Mm. So they've had to be tough because, not to take offence by what I say, mm. I could be get away or get or go away or, you know... Cause, see, like if you haven't slept for three days and you finally go off to sleep and accidentally they open the door and say, Mom! <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> 
it's, it's like, ah, but then so they got to like, close the door quick and run away, you know, because she's coming, she's a dragon. But they don't take things personally. Mm -hmm. Don't take things personally. And that's not just with anybody from a brain injury element. It's from any condition. Mm. Any, and I keep using the word chronic illnesses because um, that's my sort of experience with my condition is chronic. So it's like mm. a, a kind of all hands on deck, all around you sort of condition. Mm. And you're trying to be yourself within that. that. That in itself was the biggest part is who am I? Who am I then? Who am I now? Mm -hmm. And that's what's helped me move forward. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm, I've got a job now. Uh, like I said, I mentioned help out in a funeral home, which I love. Mm. And I have to come back and talk to you about that. By the way, by the way, you have to come specifically <laughs> to tell me that because that's uh, that's another. Oh, I, I can't wait. I, I need. That's another exciting topic. I need to talk to you because it's next time. She's very gonna much. Back. I can't wait to come. If, you, if your viewers want me back. You let me give you guys give some likes and comments. I'll come back. Yeah, and any sure. questions? <laughs> any I love to. Yeah. You know, if you get, a, you probably think she have not a word yet. I've been mean, talking the whole time, mm. and I got so many questions for you. I know it's your show, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah, do do ask. Yeah, me. <laughs> oh, I'm fascinated. I've, I've been since I've been here. I've, I've had a job at the lovely afternoon. I've had lunch with this lady. She made the most beautiful <laughs> fish. And all I've done is ask you questions and questions and questions, haven't I? Um, yeah. Where have you been? Where have you stay? Where have you study? Where do you? <laughs> Yeah, so Donna, your story is really amazing. Your healing process, your journey is inspiring. I should say that because realizing what you have, what you're going through at the moment, and uh, being positive, and um, mm. being honest and open, and also thankfully having a great family and friends mm. that understood what you're going through and being supportive I think uh, really made a massive difference and obviously having a very great support system like uh, the healthcare system yeah. which was there for you and uh, it's really fascinating and I'm, I'm so proud of you your healing, <laughs> your you. healing journey is Thank really so really amazing yeah um, I don't know if you have something else to say to our viewers before we uh, well, I'd just like to say that, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful to be invited to talk with you. I know it's taken a while, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward really to coming looking back. Forward to having yes, we got, but we got so much to talk about, like, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the job, like I said, mm -hmm. with the, with the, the, like, funeral. the funeral stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and again, talking, talking more about you. I mean, I think your lovely viewers need to more, know more about you. Mm. <laughs> so I'll give you guys the chance. I'll ask all the questions that you're dying to know. <laughs> uh, I'll bring you in next time. You're gonna tell us about your funeral service and how you really, you know, impact on that because uh, sometimes people think it's not something I for women, wait. especially African communities, yeah. when you're doing such a kind of job. But I think it's a little bit. They don't understand, so mm. you come and tell us. Well, yeah, my husband was like, "No, you're not doing that job." So I, I, I yeah, there's a, there's a really good story to tell you. You're gonna come next time and tell us, <laughs> guys. She's, she, I'll bring I'll, I'll bring her next time. She's gonna tell us about her current job and how she's doing it. Yeah, it's really really amazing. Thank you all, guys, for watching us. And uh, if you haven't subscribed. <laughs> I please um, ask you to subscribe. It's really a great support that we need from you all. And if you feel inspired, please do share this video. And thank you so much. I'll bring you. I'll bring Donna again. Donna, <laughs> yeah. Promise me you come back. I'm definitely coming back. And um, yeah, I will look forward to it. Thank you really so much for your time. And if anybody watching this has any questions about anything I've just said, um, about encephalitis or autoimmune stuff or recovery and positive, mm -hmm. positive mental attitude and. I, I'd be more than happy to you know reply to anything. Yeah, please leave a comment below and let us know what uh, your question is. Donna is happy to answer your <laughs> I questions am, I am. and she's happy to come back and answer you all. Thank yeah. you all. And if, if, if she can get a word in, word in, word in somewhere next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.